Hey, this is Jake from Mito. I'm going to show you today how you can use Mito to quickly analyze and explore data sets in Python using the spreadsheet interface. So for those who don't know, Mito is a spreadsheet interface for Python. All you have to do is import the Mito sheet package and then call a Mito sheet sheet, and it renders this interactive spreadsheet here. And everything we do in the spreadsheet is going to generate the equivalent code in the cell below. So you make an edit here, it generates the code for you. It's a really quick way to get your analysis done. You don't have to go to Stack Overflow or Google to find syntax. You just do it in the spreadsheet and it generates the code for you. So I've imported a data set here. To do that, all I did was click import, opens, opens up my local file system here. I can search my files um, and find the file I want. And then I'm just importing, I click the uh, import button here when I have my file selected and it populates the sheet. And when it does that, it automatically generates the code that turns my file into a data frame. To install Mito, all I have to do is run these commands. So python-m pip install Mito installer, which installs the Mito installer. And then in the Mito installer, we're just running the install command. So just run these two commands and you're good to go. Open up JupyterLab and uh, you can run your Mito sheet. The first thing I might want to do is just understand um, the kind of data that I have. So here I can see I have 2,500 rows and seven columns. I can, if there's a specific piece of data I'm looking for, I can search for that data and we'll see it highlight. So I'm looking for Nissen here. We see all the Nissen's highlight, highlight here and we can scroll through this just like we would a spreadsheet. I'll get rid of this here. Oops. Um, I might want to look at for a specific column, maybe sort of a distribution of the values I have. So I'll click on the country tab here, which is showing the different countries for the data I have. I can apply filters here. So if I just want to look at uh, Japan, apply that. We had filter just to Japan. And when I look below, I see I generated the equivalent code for that filter here. Now I'm going to take off that filter. And we see the code disappears. This tab, I can look at the different values. So I can see what are the unique values I have in any of my columns and what is the uh, frequency of those? How many times do they occur and what's the percentage of the total data set that is that value? And I can sort these values in ascending uh, or descending by occurrence or by the value itself. And I can look at my data that way. In the summary stats tab, I can look at a chart of the frequencies. This is really valuable uh, visual aid there. And then I also get some summary stats for the column. If this were a numeric column, we'd have more summary stats. I can show you here. This is a numeric column. And here we get a lot more summary stats. So I'll close that. Um, another thing we can do here is we can add a column ourselves and put a formula in. So I want to add a column next to here. So I'm going to click Add Column. And I'm first, I'm going to rename this column to, let's just call it if, because I'm going to use an if statement in there. And I'm going to put a, a formula in this column. So I'm going to say equals if this column, oops, if, uh, hold on, if, to select the if function there. Yeah, if this column equals bold, then return one, otherwise return zero. There we go. So now we've put a, a tag on whether the value in the style column here is a bowl or not. And if I go down below, we get the code for making the new column and renaming it, as well as putting that formula in the column. Another thing I do is I can use pivot tables to analyze my data. So I'm gonna click pivot here. Let's look at the different styles. I just wanna look at a count of how many styles I have for each. So I'll do styles and then count, and then we get a nice quick chart showing each type of style and how many times that style occurs. And again, we get the code for that pivot table down here. This is an example of code that, you know, if you had to do it yourself, it might take a little bit of time to go to Stack Overflow and get the exact right syntax, but there I just uh, run the code and it's good to go. Or just uh, do it in the sheet and it's good to go. And the nice thing about Mito is that all this code is runnable and usable carry forward. So this new pivot table is called DF2. So if I run this cell here, and then print out df2, we see we get our pivot table. And I can click this button here to call it back into a new Mito sheet, just like that. The other thing I'll show you is that we have some graphing functionality as well. So if I want to graph this pivot table, I'll do this. Let's say for this, we'll probably want to use a bar chart or maybe a scatter plot, more of a bar chart. And we would do style as our x-axis and style count as the y-axis here. And here we get a nice chart showing 
how many accounts we have for each of these styles. And I can copy the graph code here. So I can copy this code. I'll put that into a cell here. And here we get the Plotly code for that graph. And this is another example of code. You know, configuring the code for a chart can take a long time to do, but in Mito, you just do a few clicks and then you can copy that code and have it ready to go to put it into production or into another notebook, whatever you want to do with it. So there's lots you can do with Mito that we didn't talk about. Um, we can delete columns, we can do merging as well, merging and joining data sets. There's a few different optionalities and types of merges you can do, which we won't get into now. But yeah, I hope you get a chance to check out Mito. It's a really powerful tool and uh, thanks for watching.